people used as a classic example of what you can achieve if you have really well-trained people with a robust plan who move fast and, and confuse the enemy. The success of the raid was a spectacular warning to anyone thinking of colluding with terrorists against Israel. If before Entebbe people knew about special forces in Israel, it was only as a little a subplot in the news. Suddenly, for the first time, everybody in the world knew all about the capability of Israeli special forces. Entebbe was a success because Israeli forces delivered awesome firepower to an enemy before he knew what hit him. But sometimes an elite soldier has to fall back on more primitive methods. When you've been hit by Israeli commandos, you stay hit. Training and selection for Israeli commando units is all about finding the nation's best strike warriors. Recruits are drawn from the entire population. Everybody in Israel does national service. Three years for boys and a year and a half for girls. Although we are a small country, we have very talented people and we have compulsory conscription. Special forces pick the best from that huge pool. The elite units look for candidates with the potential to be the best. The physical and mental standards are extremely high. The best specimens are discovered on a series of grueling hikes with heavy packs. The hardest is an incredible 85 mile, 120 kilometer ordeal. It's as much a test of character as physical strength. Some of the people go to the limits and they faint. And sometimes we'll say, well, this is a good guy. Because he's going to go and treat, you know, past his limits and he can't do any more. If you finish, you feel an immense satisfaction for many years to come. Then, if you have all of a sudden a mission of 40 kilometers, you think, what's 40 kilometers? It's nothing. I have done 120 kilometers. But the most brutal part of the special forces training is unarmed combat. Mookie Betzer always had to toughen up fresh recruits. I lined up the recruits in rows and I told everyone to take turns hitting each other. Whoever didn't hit hard enough, I immediately hit them with a hard blow. And that's how they learned to hit properly. At one point, I told one of the soldiers to slap me hard. He was afraid because I was an officer. He slapped me timidly. I smacked him to the ground. Then he got angry, he got back up and hit me hard. That soldier learned to fight the hard way. An ideal warrior for us would be someone who has the capacity for violence. We'd be looking for a violent person. We'd be looking for someone who has who control his violence. Uh, his feelings. The Israeli military have their own unique systems of hand-to-hand -hand combat. These date back to the birth of the nation. A young Palmach warrior called Emmy Lichtenfeld developed his own practical combat system. The system was called Krav Maga. It became the basis for all Israel Defense Forces hand-to-hand -hand fighting. Emil Lichtenfeld was a genius. He came from Slovakia to Israel, and he came from the background of uh, wrestling and um, boxing. He put together, uh, to the best of his knowledge, the techniques that are um, the traditional Krav Maga. Krav means fight. Maga means contact. And it's a term uh, that uh, was created for, uh, to describe all the hand-to-hand -hand combat techniques for, the, for military use. 
and Krav Maga. Attack is the best form of defense. Kicking, punching, butting and gouging. Nothing is too brutal. Straightforward. No nonsense. You can do Kung Fu, but you need years and years and years of training to become, shall we say, efficient in it. And uh, Krav Maga, you can be taught in, in a short period how to defend yourself. Guns, knives, chairs, baseball bats. Anything can be used as a weapon. The main idea is that we always assume that the other person is much bigger and stronger than you. Adrenaline is rushing, you, your legs are shaking, and you have to work from that angle. Moni Isaac is a martial arts champion and the founder of a form of Krav Maga, created specially for commandos. 1973, after Yom Kippur War, uh, I was uh, in elite commando unit that was um, basically most of the uh, members got killed. And um, I was uh, chosen to uh, continue the work on the development of the Krav Maga to the elite units. The Israel Defense Force wanted a review of Krav Maga as part of the shakeup after the near disaster of Yom Kippur. Moni's martial arts expertise and recent commando combat experience made him the perfect candidate. He teamed up with the godfather of Krav Maga, Emi Lichtenfeld. We experiment with the Krav Maga techniques, but with some other techniques that I knew because I came from a very rich background of uh, jiu-jitsu and judo. Uh, I was a champion of Israel many times. And I understood the biomechanic of the move and I started to develop my own techniques. Moni stripped back Krav Maga principles even further for commandos. The main key when somebody put a gun to the side of your head is to be able to move out of the line of fire. I'm using the blade of my hand, keeping my hand very close to my ear, and use the blade of my head to push the gun out of the line of fire. At that stage, this hand is trapping the gun, this hand trapping the wrist. The gun is going to be twisting to him with 20% power. My hand that's holding the wrist is going to pull with 80% power. And I'll have the gun in my hand. Commando Krav Maga is the essence of Israeli commando fighting principles. Hit and hit hard. Knock your enemy off balance and then break contact. Engage as fast as possible and disengage immediately. If you stay there and try to punish the attacker, he can pull a knife all of a sudden. I'm blocking it from the inside and now holding the hand very close to the knife. From this position, I'm going to pull up here and turning the hand down. As I'm doing that, I'm locking my hands together. And he's going to pull, for sure. He's leaving the knife in my hand. And I have in my hand the knife. The Israeli commando has a combination of brutal training and the best firepower in the world. But he will always be at a numerical disadvantage. What they need to do with such a large number of potential enemies and such a small army is to have always technology rather than manpower to rely upon. The pressure is always on Israeli weaponologists to stay ahead of the game. Try always not to be exposed to the direct enemy fire. The compact and lethal Uzi. The futuristic Micro Tavor. The light but powerful Negev light machine gun. Israeli commandos always have the best military hardware. Always we are looking 